There were over 800 original series available in the English Line Webtoon website and app, and I've read at least one chapter of every single one of them. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but I'm not kidding. According to the Webtoon Yearly Summary thingy, in year 2022 alone, I logged in almost every day in the platform. No wonder I'm a certified binge reader and mighty marathoner. <laughs> Apparently, I've read over 3,000 episodes, over 350 series across all of the platform's available genres. Well, I think the total is supposed to be 16 instead of 17 though. This one seemed to have been counted as a genre by accident. Being among the top 1% new series navigator is to be expected because I check out the new titles released every month. So discovering 200 of them just in one year is not a surprise. Well, although these stats look insane, I'm pretty sure that there are others who have read more than I have. And believe it or not, I'm also a little picky. So although I quickly pick up a new title, I can drop or stall just as fast. Whether you're like me or not, if you are curious of what someone who reads tons of webtoons across almost all genres would recommend, then continue watching. But before we move on to the list, please allow me to discuss and explain the video's backstory, scope, and format. Last year, 2021, I made a tier list covering over 300 ongoing webtoon titles. Now, for year 2022, I will be covering both ongoing and completed titles due to popular demand. Sometimes completed is on the lead, then sometimes it's ongoing. So I decided with 50-50. But making a tier list with over 800 titles would take me forever. So this video will only cover 100 titles. Half for completed, then the other half for ongoing. Well, that's the original plan at least. Choosing just 50 for each group gave me a hard time. So as some sort of cheat, I added 22 more titles and they're divided into two as well. The number 22 came from, well, year 2022. So this video shall feature my 122 highly recommended series as of December 30, 2022. But anthologies and as well as titles under the informative genre are out of scope, okay? However, even with this cutoff, it still gave me a hard time. <laughs> it was so difficult to cut off my other favorites. But anyway, since this video has been released, thankfully, I managed somehow. But as usual, the titles are not going to be in any particular order because ranking them will make me struggle once again. <laughs> By the way, since the recommendations in this video are among my favorites, I agree that some titles are not really impressive story-wise. However, they have characters who are charming or entertaining enough that make the series worth reading nonetheless. Well, for me at least. Anyway, I have this habit of classifying my recommendations so that people who only want a specific genre can focus on that group or will find out that that series actually has such a trope. So, like last time, titles in this video are going to be grouped into categories which could refer to a genre or theme or trope. There will be 9 of them in particular, but they will be further divided into several subgroups, which I shall elaborate once we get to each group. But please note that titles will only appear once. So if I have already featured a title in one category, it's not going to be featured again in other categories. Grouping them is quite challenging. Since all of them are my favorites, majority of them is a mix of multiple genres and tropes. <laughs> Oh well, I just picked one of their tropes or themes. For each title featured, the plot can be found on this side. You can just post the video to read. If the featured series is already completed, there will be a completed label around this corner. 
But if the series already ended, and for some reason there's no completed label, I'll just put it manually. Alright, without further ado, let's start with... The first category is... Made of Badass. It will mainly consist of action webtoons set in the modern world, so no fantasy stuff. These have adult main characters who are involved in the criminal world. Coffin Jackson has a mortician MC who works with criminals. Killer Banks got a clumsy yet little assassin MC. The MC of Noise from Upstairs is trying his best to be normal, but his gangster neighbor is making things difficult for him. Here's a teenage version of the earlier group. The MC of Viral Hit is on a quest to take down bullies. The bullies in study group are associated to gangsters, so the school fights are pretty much like gangster fights. Teenage Mercenary is on another level. From school bullies, to gangsters, to professional mercenaries. The next group also consists of teenagers, but the action is in the sports that they do. So we have different types of athletes here. We have a passionate soccer player in The Build Up. The MC from Infinity used to like soccer too, but he fell in love with fencing later. In no scope, there are talented professional gamers. Then the boxer has, well, the boxer. Each boxer character is the MC of his own arc. Last group in this category have main characters who are like secret agents. The MC of 100 will do whatever it takes to find a certain someone, while the MC of manager Kim will do anything for his daughter. Opposite the earlier category, the next category, A Whole New World, is set in a fantasy or fictional setting. The first group has similarities to historical Korea. In Aza, there is this conflict between humans and demons. Then in Spirit Hunter, the supernatural creatures are also being eliminated but has more action and comedy. While in Mystic Prince, I think there's also cultivation. For titles set in worlds wherein magic is normal, then if you want a medieval romance, there is The Remarried Empress. And if you're also a sucker for zodiac sign stuff, The Witch and the Bull is a lovely read. But if you prefer a non-romance-centric series, there is Warrior Executioner, while Tower of God is a webtoon classic for a reason. But my absolute favorite in this group is Hookie. I love it even more than Harry Potter. The Sound of Magic is a special case. It's not exactly set in a fantasy world, but this webtoon is super enchanting. The next category, Across Worlds and Time, has titles with transporting to or involvement of other worlds. It could be any world that is simply not the Earth that we are familiar with. This category will also involve stuff related to time travel or long passage of time. Let's start with regression, which is a very common trope we see in webtoons. Regressors go back to the past with their memories intact. Under the romance fantasy genre, I like leveling up my husband to the max. Try to endure the annoying misunderstandings at the beginning. They'll sort it out bit by bit later. For action fantasy, there's Doombreaker. It's like the memorized webtoon, but done right. If modern setting, A Man's Man is super underrated. It's sort of based on the history of the Samsung smartphone. Next, we've got Reincarnators. Characters here get reborn after death. Advent of the Dark Mage is pretty wholesome, but the MC is being awkward about it. <laughs> the MC of Descended from Divinity might claim to be a ruthless demon lord, but his devotion to his people is so remarkable. But if you prefer a Murim setting, there's Best Teacher Bake. For an action series, it also has focus on family, teacher-student, and friend or comrade relationships. Now, for those with a modern setting, that game is quite dark and it makes you think twice about taking your life. For a romance-centric version of the trope, there is See You in My 19th Life. Next, we've got 
transmigrators wherein the MC was transported into the world of a novel, but they possess a certain character's body. The greatest estate developer is different from its counterparts since I've never seen any other webcomic which had blended civil engineering and action fantasy elements so well. Transmigration is common under the action or romance fantasy genre, but surviving romance is more of under the horror or mystery genre. If you want an actual world crossing, then we've got Charming, the Duke of the North. It somewhat follows the classic romance fantasy isekai trope, but the MC does not have typical OP abilities of a chosen one. For virtual reality game series, there's Rainforest Wooden Stick. It's somewhat like One Punch Man. Micro Hunter appears to be the same as other webtoons with gaming elements, but it has space travel in its second season. For space travel that is a bit closer to a realistic one, we've got Space Boy. The ocean is like another world in Surviving as a Fish. I never expected the gaming system to be combined with fishing, but this series made it work. In Limit Breaker, only the MC has a system and he is a returnee to Earth after getting super powerful from another world. He gets into other countries and other worlds too later on. But if you're more into parallel universe crossing with the alternate reality stuff even, Parallel City is an exciting read. Then these two titles are kinda complicated. The world crossing in my S-Class Hunters is not simply through dungeons. The regression which the MC did caused more than just a butterfly effect to his new timeline. While Omniscient Reader contains pretty much all the time travel and world crossing tropes you can imagine, but they are impressively connected. The next category consists of other superhumans in the modern world. Most of them don't have the game system interface. Let's start with those that have abilities which are more of the supernatural side. The MC of Rotten can see dead people, while the MC in See No Evil can read minds. Titles in the next group have superpowers that are more of under the fantasy genre. Elicid, wherein people with powers or the awakened are in factions or organizations. Fast Forward is a survival game among humans with time control abilities. While in Jungle Juice, we have characters with abilities based on insects. Then in Ice, the powers are based on birds, and there's this conflict between Predator and Prey. While the MC in Tax Reaper can identify those who don't pay taxes. Sounds boring, but the arcs are presented as if it's an action fantasy series. The last group consists of superheroes with issues about being a hero or there's some hero versus villain conflict. The MC of Toaster Dude just wants to live with his toaster in peace. <laughs> In the world of an ordinary, all characters have superpowers but the MC doesn't. In Be My Villain, the normal MC falls in love with a villain. While in Kind of Confidential, there's a hero plus villain romance. In Villain to Kill, the MC used to be a hero but he got reincarnated as a villain. While in Samadhi, the one who is doing heroic stuff is labeled as a villain, while the bad guy is glorified as the hero. The situation in the Earth's Chosen Savior is similar but a bit more complicated because the MC is doing stuff that a villain normally would, but he's not exactly evil. Nice sample of grey morality. Characters under the next category are also superhuman in some sense because it's about the life of an idol and it could refer to any sort of celebrity. Titles under this group have bands, can be a rock band or a K-pop group. There's a western band in Beatwix but the singer may lead here became like a ghost. For a Korean version, the characters of Superstar Associate Manager are forming a band. The main lead of Your Smile is a Trap used to be a K-pop idol trainee. 
Lost in Translation stars a K-pop group with one of its band members being based on a real South Korean celebrity. And he knows, he even sang for the webtoon. Now, for social media influencers, Killstagram's female lead is an Instagram star with a stalker. Then in Grasp, the female lead is a YouTube streamer with creepier stalkers. Then for the hybrids or miscellaneous types of celebrities, the male lead of the hip guy is more of a model, but he and the female lead do some promotions in social media. The male lead of Secret Playlist is from a K-pop band, while its female lead sings live in YouTube. The male lead in her bucket list started singing in crowds, then later becomes popular. I can't recall if he became a professional singer. The male lead of Act Like You Love Me is an actor and a model, while the male lead of The Makeup Remover is a well-known makeup artist. Then his female lead is not really a celebrity, but she became the male lead's model in a reality TV show. The main character in Mom, I'm Sorry became some sort of celebrity after going viral in social media, while her admirer is a professional golfer that does some modeling and commercials thanks to his popularity. Main characters here are also popular, but more of in a negative way. So I call this category, Once Upon a Freak. Main characters of the first group have some sort of social disorder. The MC of Dr. Frost lacks emotions, while the MC of Escape Room is extremely rational. The MC and the main villain of Savior's Time have similar issues. This group contains characters with disabilities related to vision. The MC of Snake and the Flower is literally blind. Then the MC of To Be Ordinary has some facial recognition problem. While the MC of Taste of Illness seems to be hallucinating. Then this group has weirdos, but they don't give a damn. The female lead of Miss Abbott and the Doctor is an Amazonian. While the female lead of Romance 101 has this weird addiction to meticulous planning. Then in Salty Studio, we've got a male lead who gave up everything for a hobby he has no talent for. Then the characters of this group are belittled for being unattractive. Spirit Fingers has a female lead who had such a problem until she meets the legit weirdos. The MC of My ID is Gangnam Beauty can't stand the bullying anymore, so she had plastic surgery. Characters in this other group are also treated as something like an outcast. The female lead of Your Letter was treated badly after defending a victim of bullying. As for the female lead in Marry Me, she's unemployed and the government tried to make her useful. While the female lead in For the Sake of Sita may have been treated like a goddess, but not really. The main characters in the next group don't want to be treated negatively, so they hide their true selves. Female lead of Good Day to be a Dog needs to hide about her curse, while the male leads of Fictional Skin can only show their true self to those they care about. The main duo of When the Day Comes have a secret that they are hiding from everyone. And there are also some secrets in Seasons of Blossom, a different one each season. The next category contains series with literal freaks in a sense that the characters are actually non-human, but instead they are supernatural beings being human. For the first group, we've got angels and demons. The MC in Love Advice has summoned a demon and had a contract with him. Devil Number 4 also has demons making contracts, but the angels in it seem more hostile. While the angels in Heavenly Eats deliver heavenly food, like literally, their close friend is the son of Satan, who is ironically nicer compared to the angel characters. For the others, Swimming Lessons for a Mermaid has a mermaid that cannot swim due to some trauma, so the swimmer male lead helps her out. 
Winter Woods has a Frankenstein that's a freaking cinnamon roll. But there's another Frankenstein in this who is hotter but more dangerous. <laughs> The Wolf and Red Riding Hood has a female werewolf, which is super unusual. Her friends aren't ordinary humans either. Super Secret is one of those webtoons with a really big variety of supernatural creatures. It also has the werewolf and vampire conflict like many other comics, but the love triangle is not between a vampire and a werewolf. Oh wait, there actually is, but it's on the supporting character. The supernatural beings in the previous category are generally harmless, but the ones in this category are considered as dangerous. So, I call this category, I'm a monster. Let's start with my favorite, the zombies. For a school action setting, there's dead life. For a wholesome and hilarious, yet also a bit creepy sometimes, there is, my daughter is a zombie. Tacit also has wholesome father-daughter moments, also lovely romance moments, and suspicious bromance moments. <laughs> now, among the titles with vampires, I am hooked to Trapped. There's a toxic relationship here which normally bothers me but it makes sense here. <laughs> I also love the Lucian. It's unusual to see vampire stories in historical setting. Unholy Blood has flaws, but the amazing art and charming characters make it forgivable. For other types of monsters, I suppose it should be easy to guess what kind of monster the MC of I'm the Grim Reaper is. The same as with the MC of Roach. This one is the creepiest in this batch for me. For a more wholesome, tragic, and heartbreaking story, there's Dark Mortal. While Dr. Hound has this supernatural detective team with a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde-like MC. Last but not the least, the Living in Hell category features titles wherein the MC is surrounded by dangerous humans and non-humans. Some of them have an MC that eventually becomes some sort of monster as well. So the titles here are mostly under the horror, thriller, or sci-fi genre. Let's start with androids. Geppetto is an underrated sci-fi story based on the Pinocchio fairy tale. In the bleak midwinter has brutal androids. If AI ruled the world is a masterpiece, but it's very tragic. Every arc makes me depressed. Next group, we've got, er, uh, insects. There's Ant. Best character is the delivery guy whose name readers often forget. <laughs> Next, there's Mosquito Wars. Lots of wacky stuff and massacres. And then we've got these bee monsters in Hive. Here's a special one, Ghost Teller. It's about a group of spirits or yokai telling horror stories wherein humans are more frightening. Now let's begin with groups focusing on titles which have a main character being haunted by real humans, particularly dangerous psychos. The MC of It's Mine has a stalker, a tragic stalker. The MC of Epilogue has a crazy murderous fan who is making his murder stories become reality. The MC of Never Ending Darling has an obsessive and powerful boyfriend. The MC of forest of humans is trapped in an asylum filled with serial killers. The main characters of The Horizon encounter a different kind of psycho in almost every arc. The titles in the next group feel like every character in it is a psycho of some sort. All suspects in Chasing Tales are suspicious. Excellent whodunit mystery series. Well, everything is fine is opposite of what the title is saying. <laughs> Looks cute, but it's a freaky sci-fi thriller. Next group has webtoons which have a hybrid of supernatural monsters and dangerous humans. Although it started with zombies, there's some variety of monsters in Hooves of Death. Hellbound seems to have only the executioner demons as monsters, but the villainous humans are more threatening sometimes. And then we've got Distant Sky, where the darkness just became 10 times creepier. 
Carnaby Kim has written a number of webtoons that are related to this category. So I put the titles he has written in one group. He is well known for this beloved masterpiece entitled Bastard. Sweet Home, which is more of the supernatural kind, is kind of boring at the beginning but later becomes super amazing. Its prequel, Shotgun Boy, isn't as fantastic but it's a must read for Sweet Home fans. And then there's Pigpen. The spooky family in it somewhat gives off Adam's family vibes. I will be listing all the titles mentioned in the video by category in the description section. This video showcased a mix of popular series and hidden gems, so I think there's a high chance that you just found out about a series you've never heard of before. <laughs> With that, I hope I had helped you discover a new favorite. So if you have enjoyed this video or if it has been helpful to you somehow, I would appreciate it if you click the like button. This also lets me know if people, well, liked it. I expect to have some similar interest with many people since I covered multiple genres. Anyway, the titles featured in the video are like my top favorites for now. Of course, it's possible for my favorites to change. Depending on the latest chapter I've read or if there's a new series officially released. Or it could be from your recommendation. So if you have any, please feel free to share in the comments. I think it will be helpful for the others as well. And to be notified for more webtoon content like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again. Take care!